All right. Good evening, everybody. Hope you're all having a good trading week so far. This is Wednesday, April 20th, 420. Okay. Still got two days left to the week so far. Um, not the best start for me personally, but one thing I have had a lot of success with, obviously, in the past two weeks, and I've been talking and hyping it a lot on Twitter, is this golden goose strategy. And I, I really have found myself winning a majority of these trades. We've recorded, I believe we're seven for eight so far on the goose plays. Today, it gave us a, I'd say 150 percenter on QQQ puts, which I'll show you in a second. And um, it, we actually had our first loss on the Golden Goose strategy in two weeks, in the two weeks I've been recording this. So, you know, first loss, but, you know, you'll take seven wins out of eight attempts any day of the week as a trader, right? You're never going to be perfect. No strategy is going to be hitting 100% of the time, okay? So just keep that in mind as we – as you know, we go through this strategy. If you want to apply this to your own trading, that's obviously by your own choice, but by no means expected to win every time. But it's definitely something that I've been seeing working really well. And it makes sense. It's going to make sense, I think, to a lot of you. And I think there's some other good points in this video that will resonate to you as a trader, maybe highlight some mistakes and some areas where you could easily improve, honestly. <clears throat> okay, so because even when I was making this um the video for boot camp for the march boot camp i learned just by you know doing some back testing of my strategies and i was able to pick up on some things so at the very least even if you don't want to use this strategy you can still hopefully pick up on some good things here okay but before we get started with the goose just have to really quickly dive into the fib levels, okay? Because the the golden goose strategy is is gonna involve using fib levels on QQQ and spy, okay? You can use this strategy really. I, I would assume on any ticker. I mean, I really wouldn't say somebody used it on a small cap today, a, a penny stock actually, and said it worked. I don't know. I'm not drawing fibs on on penny stocks just because of the manipulation and stuff, the charts are not really as, as reliable in my opinion. But I'm using this on large caps, really staple names, you know, the, the uh, indices, SPY and QQQ. I've used it on Apple and Tesla as well. That's really where I draw the line. I mean, you can go into Microsoft, um, what else? NVIDIA, AMD, those types of names, right? But when you start getting into like these $5 stocks and penny stocks, I I, I personally am avoiding that for this strategy. Okay. So I'm sticking with the large names, but let's get into the fibs for QQQ and spy. A lot of people have been asking me for these and guys, even if you don't want to use these fibs for um, the indices, or if you don't want to use them in your trading, you know, I think they're at least good to have up because you'll start to notice things that really were unrecognizable before. And I really don't know how to, like dive into that in detail because you just have to have the fibs there and see what happens during the trading days and you'll see some crazy stuff. So it, it really opened my eyes when I was drawing these fibs with Mander and I didn't really have a lot of exposure to them, you know, last fall. And I saw how things were just reacting. Like the, the fib would be pre-market high or high a day, low day. It was just really eye-opening. So I was like, okay, I gotta get gotta get my eyes on these fibs, gotta get drawing them myself. Okay. So first things first, I go up here. This is Thinkorswim, obviously. If you're using Weeble, it might be different. Hit my settings tool. I'm going into equities, guys. A lot of people ask me, pre-market on or off when I draw my fibs? Turning it off. Turning it off. Reason is, okay, I have found that the levels are better respected during the actual trading day, okay? Just me personally, from what I've seen back testing this, you know. So I have them off. All right. And then number two, I'm on the 180 day chart. I mean, yeah, some people use the daily. It's gonna get it's gonna be the same thing. Really? So all right, let's get into it though. Um, first things first, 
I'm going to start with the high before the downtrend starts to draw my fib level. Okay. So you could clearly see that, yes, we have a high here, but we have a couple bounces and really the big drop off comes when we peak right here. Okay. So I actually use this level right here, which is 404.58. And to draw the fib, you just go in here to drawings, down to drawing tools, down to this percent sign. Okay. And you can hit it. You see how it says 404.57. We can fix that in a minute. And I drag it down to this low. This low is 317.45. All right. You see on the right, it says 317.28. That's fine. Okay. Well, what you could do if the fibs are off by a couple cents, you just go double click or right click, edit properties, come right in here, and you could just adjust the values. Okay. So I think it was 58 and yeah, 317.45. But yeah, you see how you can adjust that and your fib will adjust accordingly. Okay. And you see the red, how I just drew it. I obviously already have them in, so I don't need to, I'm going to remove it, but I'm just showing you for the sake of the video. Okay. So that's this fib, right? So I have here to here and it gives me all these levels. Boom, 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 and boom. And uh, this is like considered the, the golden ratio. Okay, so some people will actually come in here and switch this color to gold because it holds better. And look at that. That was this high right here on this fib. So it really is, you know, something to pay attention to. Um, you also have sort of nearby over here. All right, and that's obviously on a larger time frame. Um, then secondly, I will also draw a fib from the bottom move right here up to this high right here. Okay. So I just went in, hit the drawing tools, same thing, percent sign. I started at 317.45. So that low, and I brought it up to this recent, this more recent high. Okay. All right. And that high is at 371.83. So I just hit here. And I drag it to that price level, 37, what was that? 371.83, I think. All right, close enough. Let me just make sure that's right for you. Yeah, that looks right. Okay. So yeah, that's how you draw it in, real simple. And remember guys, I drew this one from top to bottom. And then I drew this one from bottom to this recent high. Okay, that's important because it's going to give you some different levels, actually, if you draw them in, depending on the direction you draw them in. So make sure you note that. Obviously, I'm going to delete that because I already have the fibs nicely drawn in. Okay. Um, let me just go in and just make sure this level is good for you. 371.83. Okay, perfect. Yeah, and you see that this gold fib overlaps this one guys that's just from the bigger fib so i have this big fib right here this level happens to just overlap that is a really good uh, piece of conviction if you if you do have that if you have an overlapping fib i i really like to play those as well intraday and obviously guys i'm on the four hour time frame right now and they work really well on the time frame that you draw them but they also work well on the shorter term time frames, okay, which I'll show you in just a second. Now let's let's get over. So we have these levels. Let's get over. Oh, by the way, I have these these uh, green fibs drawn in. These, this is just me testing out um, some funky levels here. So just bear with me. Don't uh, just ignore these for now. They're sort of sort of another fib strat that I'm back testing with these green ones. Just want to see how they're working because. If I actually just, I'll show you real quick um, how these levels work out. So custom, what was it last Friday? So April, oh, last Thursday, we were off on Friday. Yeah, April 14th. So if I show you like, look at that. So that's why I have these green fibs in here. You see, we got a hold right here. Nice bounce off, um, came back retested. So those green ones are a little experimental. For the sake of the video, just ignore them for now. I might make another YouTube video on those and the new strategy that I'm working on if, if it's valid. I'm not going to put anything out that is not valid. All right. 
Now we're up moving on to spy. So I'm going to tell you my spy levels here. So I, I drew this high, pretty clear cut. So you want to draw it before the, the big drop off. Okay. So where the move starts, right? So we were in an uptrend. We get a green candle here. And then this red candle is really the start of the big spill off. Okay. So the uh, 479.98, just tap that and I drag it down to 410.64. Okay. That's what I did for that one. Pretty simple. So just tap there, bring it down to here, got your level, boom, okay? And then this one um, is pretty obvious, right? Here's the big uh, peak right here. So I, I drew one from here to here, which is 410. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I drew this from here to here, okay? So from top to bottom, okay? And if you want to get into that, I mean, it, it really depends. It depends on a couple of things. I don't want to get into why I draw on top to bottom or you know where I draw um, the fib from exactly because we already have a YouTube video on that. Mander and Diamond did that for us. So check out our other YouTube content if interested in those. Okay, if you want more info on fibs and drawing fibs, that whole bit. I'm just trying to get you guys my levels for now. So I drew obviously this one down to here, 479.98, down to 410.64. And then I drew another one from 462.07 right here, down to that same low, okay? Makes sense. Sorry, it looks like somebody was somehow popped in here. <laughs> no clue how. Anyway, all right, we got these levels. These fib levels should be good to go. You should have them maybe pull up your own chart while you're watching this. Could be helpful. But uh, wait, let me just look at one more thing. We'll stick on this chart. Ah, stick on this chart. Um. Trying to see something real quick. All right, anyway. All right, so these fibs should be set in stone. All right, so you got these fibs. That's step one to my setup for um, the golden goose strat and really how I trade throughout the day. Step two is going to be drawing or putting these indicators on just going to be simply the nine and the 21 EMA. I also have the 50 up here. I got to change this color, by the way. Um, so all you got to do guys, I'll, I'll delete these and I'll do it from scratch for you. Move av exp. Oh, let me see. Move. Uh, what is it? Oh, move. AVG, that's what I forgot to put that. All right, I hit this three times, boom, boom, boom. I get three coming up. Starts you on the nine automatically. If not, just quickly go hit settings, length nine, bang, okay? Length 21, and I make the 21 gray, by the way. You could obviously do it differently. You don't need the 50 for the goose strap, but I use the 50 for day trading i make this one blue okay so the nine is like a light blue all right and then boom got my emas this is going to be the 50 okay this is going to be the 21 this is going to be the nine this gray one all right and this is this is one of our fib levels so just you could ignore that for now all right so that's how i get my emas ready to go i got my fib levels ready to go these green lines, you can ignore them, I'll remove it. It's just, those are key levels I'm, I'm plotting throughout the day. Um, I have this price level. All I do is like, say I see like high day here, I just double tap right there. Boom, got a high day, got a line there for later. But yeah, that's my setup. Those are the indicators I'm using. That's, you know, the fibs and the EMAs are really the focus of my trading as well as obviously key levels. Gonna do another YouTube on key levels. That's really more of a deep dive, a little complicated and um, one of my specialties for sure. 
so I can't really combine them at the moment. But I'm going to switch over right now real quick to this presentation. I got a little presentation on the goose. I think this is going to help before I show you an example or two. Um, just want to talk really briefly at, about the A plus setups. Okay. And I know this is like, looks textbooky and boring, but really this is important. It's just, just three little points. This could literally tweak your trading. I mean, just realizing this point about A plus setups could save me. I mean, I had a $21,000 loss or $22,000 loss in March last year. And I was like, what the hell do I do? I, I really, you know, I was, a six figure trader, I had crossed like hundred K um, up to that point, got to like 135 and then took a $22,000 setback. And I was just like, shit, maybe I don't have this all figured out. And then I lost another 5k and I really was like, all right, what, what can I do? And I, I taught myself the A plus setup, right? I figured out that I was taking not high probability trades, and, you know, once I started gearing more towards the high probability trade, the A plus setup trade, you know, my win rate increased, my portfolio saw the benefit and so on and so forth. I mean, it just, it just makes sense when you say it out loud. Okay. So think of a trade as an essay you wrote in school, you know, high school, middle school, whatever, for some of you that might be a trick, a trip back in time, but, you know, I'm sure everyone had to do this where you had to write the essay for or with the uh the thesis and the three pieces of supporting evidence right you had your introduction you had your three supporting pieces of evidence in three paragraphs so you have four paragraphs right there and then you have your conclusion i want you to hone in on those three pieces of supporting evidence and apply them to trading it should be really the same mentality when you enter a trade for an A plus setup, guys, I want to have at least three pieces of confirmation or conviction as to why that trade will work. These two points right here as to why that trade will, number one, work in your favor. Okay, so why, why it will move in that direction that you're pointing to, number one. And number two, why it will also work from the price point or the, the time of day that you're entering the trade, right? Because as an options trader, we have theta and we have time decay in our contracts. So it's important about not just, oh, do we have the direction right? But, you know, we need to be right usually pretty quickly, uh, especially if you're a day trader, because you don't want your contracts to erode to time decay. So entries are very important as well. I have a Google Doc right here on the A plus setup. Okay, it's got a lot of good stuff. I'm not going to go too, too deep into this, but you can definitely take a look at it. I'll post it. Basically, you know, I have like an outline of what I consider a B setup, a C setup, A minus, and A plus. Okay. Let me just go back to the slide here. But yeah, you can check that out. I'll post it underneath uh, the tweet or however I put this out. Okay, so the A plus setup, um, I want to have at least three to four added pieces of conviction into my trade. So think about it like this. When you are about to enter spy puts, ask yourself, can I name three reasons why this trade is going to work from this price level, right? And, you know, maybe I could list off the top of my head, right? I have nine EMA resistance. I have VWAP resistance overhead. I have lower lows forming on the chart right? There's three that I just named randomly. Um, it obviously could be different reasons as to why that trade might work. All right. Another, another, another trade idea for an A plus setup could be like, I have, um, I have pre-market high at 445.05. Okay. Say we're trading at 440.490 and I want to take a trade at 445.05 for spy puts. Why? I have pre-market high coming up. I have 445 psych level, right? So those are going to be two hard levels to slice through. <clears throat> My EMAs, maybe they're still, you know, crossed downwards. So we're in a bearish trend. Um, and then maybe I have a FIB level over the top as well as resistance. Okay, so there's four things telling me 
you know, we have a lot of resistance in this area. It's a supply zone, whatever it may be, but you want to have multiple pieces of conviction when you enter a trade because that just makes sense. Why would you enter a trade? Because, oh, we have VWAP. What else? Nothing. Just VWAP. Okay. You have one thing. All right. Is, is that one thing like the sacred indicator? Is that going to work every time? If VWAP worked every time, no one would use anything else. Right. So the more stuff you have in a trade, the better your odds are going to be. And again, nothing's ever going to be certain. Right. Prices are going to move because, you know, people are buying or people are selling and supply and demand. Right. All right. So that is the A plus setup. And that is important to understand when going into the golden goose, because the golden goose is one of my favorite variations of an A plus setup. It is just the perfect depiction of an A plus setup. And you'll see why in this slide. Okay. So the golden goose guys, I know we've talked a lot about it. So let's get into it. Coaches criteria right here. And I shared this with boot camp, uh, March boot camp, but it's a little bit of a newer strategy that I was back testing and I really liked the results. So I I'm sharing it public nine and 21 EMA crossover. Okay. All right. Understand this, the nine and the 21 EMA crossover is good. But again, I see people taking trades solely because a nine and 21 EMA have crossed over the nine and the 21 EMA crossed over five times today. Okay. So sure. You would have been right sometimes, but it crossed over five times. That means it would have reversed on you five times throughout the trading day. That's pretty, pretty frustrating. And you definitely would have had some losers if you took trades solely off of this. So that's not a good thing. Okay. Point is, I want these to be moving in my direction. So it helps me establish a trend. That's the sole purpose of the nine and the 21 EMA crossover. It's not to solely take trades off of this. It's to help me establish, establish what direction I think the stock is trending in. And that's very important when using the golden goose strategy, because it really gives you the ultimate entry from what I've seen to a continued trend. And it really works well, especially lately when things have been trending down, we've been getting a lot of slow trend days, um, but you know, things see pullbacks things retrace and people don't understand or they're not they're looking at too much of like a micro time frame they're too zoomed in on the chart and they think oh reversal reversal right it might not necessarily be reversing it's just getting a bounce shorts are covering you know whatever the case may be uh, people are pulling out taking some profits and it's totally normal for a stock to not just go down the entire day it's going to it's going to come back a little bit and this golden goose strategy is a way for me to capitalize on when I miss the move and I stay patient, I can really get perfect ads for that next leg down or that next leg up. Okay. So the nine and 21 EMA crossover helps me establish the direction that the overall trend of the stock is trading in. Okay. Step number two, I really need patience guys. This is why I love the play because, you know, Stocks, and I, I trade live, so it's easy to show, but it's easy to show in the Discord, but stocks really gravitate towards key levels. If you really have like key levels marked up on your chart every day and you watch the indices all day like I do, you'll see. They don't just move randomly. Sometimes MMs play some games and like there's some fuckery candles like today. You know, there was a lot of BS going on. But stocks are going to, to move off of key levels. Like, I just want to give you a quick example right now off the top of my head. Um, SPY for, let me see. I got to turn my pre-market on to show you. But pre-market low yesterday. Okay, right here. Pre-market low. So you come in here. It's the trading day. Oh, wow. Look at that fib. Or was it? It was QQQ. Apologies. Yes, QQQ right here. Spy work too, but um, QQQ. So you come, I come into the trading day, guys, and I always mark high a day and low a day. So high a day would be right here and low a day is right here. Okay. So I come in, I mark low a day. Spy 
at open yesterday. We get this pop, we get this drop. Look, where do we bounce? Where do we get this massive move? Do we just get it right off open? No, we get it off of pre-market low right here where we got the bounce in pre-market. Okay, so look at that. Look at that massive move. And then it finally found some resistance. Where? Random level? No, at this FIB level. It still smashed through, but it finally found some resistance here. Okay, so stocks are not just bouncing randomly. And, you know, it's not a, a game of randomness for the most part. Again, there's still some stuff that, you know, say big toots are offloading or whatnot. I mean, things are going to move how they're going to move. But for the most part, I mean, it's a lot of, uh, a lot of computers. And, uh, you know, that's why you see things like happen so perfectly off these FIB levels because you have these like algos in today's market. Um, you have a lot of people setting limits in these areas, right? So that's why we see these types of reactions off of key levels. So understand that key levels, FIBs, they are sort of a magnet, okay? It's going to be important to understand when we're going over the goose. And that's why you need patience. That's why you need patience because, you know, if a stock is pulling back and you really wanted puts on it, and say, you know, we're trending down, we're trending down, and we get a little bit of a pop, and you're like, oh, I've been waiting for a pop all day, and we've been going down all day. Like, this is my chance if I miss it, you know, and you want to just jump in right away, but you really should be waiting. I should be waiting for the pullback to a key level where we, you know, or an indicator or something, some point of resistance that I think shorts will, will load up and um, take, the, take the stock down with me. Okay. Otherwise you're kind of just guessing and you're not giving yourself the best chance. Okay. Um, step four of my criteria for the goose, I need some added conviction pieces. Okay. We'll get into that. 21 EMA. This is my favorite spot guys. And a major key level. Okay. So this is essentially, if I were to summarize it in short, the goose strat is a nine and 21 EMA crossover that establishes a trend. Okay. So up or down bullish or bearish um and then i get a that nine ema is going to come underneath my 21 the nine is going to tell me that say we're heading downwards okay and stocks heading down heading down gets a little extended for my emas and it finally pulls back but where do i want to get in it's going to be where my 21 ema overlaps a major key level okay major key levels could be daily chart major key level, high a day, low a day, pre-market high, pre-market low, yesterday's high and yesterday's low. Those are major key levels. Those work too, and I've seen them work well, but I really have been liking FIBs as well, but both work, both work for the most part. I mean, again, nothing's going to work all the time, but both have been working from what I've seen. But when I say major key level, um, I really like this as a fib, preferably, and they must overlap. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect to the scent overlapping, but in the vicinity. All right, so let's show this on a chart. This is a chart of SPY here from the other day. My fibs, okay, I have a lot of levels on here. I know it's a little messy. Pay attention to just the blue fib levels, okay? These are just key levels and crap that I draw in. All right. Step one, boom, we have nine and 21 EMA crossover. Remember, the 21 is gray, the nine is light blue. Got that crossover right there. Here it is. So we're downtrending all day. We're downtrending all day. I miss, I miss an entry. I'm like, oh shit, like we're going down. We're going down. We're going to new lows all day, but where can I get in? Boom, right here. This isn't perfect because it actually adjusts after these candles close. And I took the picture, as you could tell, like pretty late, but the 21 was a little bit closer here, okay? And it overlapped this fib right here, the 427 fib right here. And look at that, perfect entry. We reject here, candle close confirmation, right down. Okay, it gave me the perfect entry for the continued downtrend. And this is what I was saying before. A lot of people are like, oh, we're reversing. Guys, 
rarely, rarely, rarely do you have like a perfect cup and handle every single day where you'll go down, sell off, and then just completely eat all this action up and just rip. Sometimes it happens, but rarely. Usually the trend is going to continue, especially in the recent market, from what I've seen, at least. So I want to get in on this continued trend, but do I just want to grab puts here? Do I want to grab puts here? Do I want to grab them here? No, I'm waiting for this pullback to my FIB level. And I also have a 21 EMA here. So guys, what I was talking about with the A plus setup before, why this is an A plus setup, let's think about it. Okay. Number one, we have a downtrend. We have a nine and 21 EMA crossover. Okay. So that's telling me we are bearish. So if I'm thinking puts, that's a supporting piece of conviction there. That's one. Number two, we have lower lows, okay? So you have a low right here, comes back up. We have another low right here, comes back up, okay? So if we follow the trend, we have a, and if you also have pre-market on, you see more lower lows here. Uh, I wouldn't really count this one, but you have a high here, come down here, low, comes up a little bit. There is your low number one. Down here, low number two, comes back up. Low number three, we get a pullback. It, it's normal to, to come back a little bit to your EMAs to uh, have some covering going on. I mean, it's totally normal to get a bounce, okay? But if we continue the trend of lower lows, we should go into a new low, okay? But the, the big problem is, not the problem, but the dilemma that a lot of people have is like, where do you get in though? Do you just get in at any random price point? I like to get in where I have the best risk reward. Because if I got in here, yeah, I'll be, I might be green over here, but I would have been red 40% right here, 30%. I mean, depending on how many days we had to expiration, right? So the best area for me, my A plus area is the golden goose area where this FIB level that we drew overlaps this 21 EMA. I mean, it really is beautiful because think about it. We have, Again, nine and 21 EMA crossover, that's supporting point number one. We have a lower low trend, that's supporting point number two. We have 21 EMA resistance, that's point supporting point number three. And we have FIB level resistance, supporting point number four of, again, why we should continue bearish and why it should reject at this specific price level. Giving me, you know, 427, as an A plus setup for puts. All right, that's example number one. I have plenty more if you're not getting just yet. And yeah, there's a fib level there, as you guys know. All right, let's look at another example. Same fib level, different day, guys. Different day. And just so you see, see there's some green here. Just to show you it's a different day. There's no green at open here on this chart. So it, it looks the same, but it's, it's not. This thing literally just worked twice perfectly at this level. All right. Golden Goose. Why I would personally take this trade 10 out of 10 times. Again, me personally, what you do is obviously your decision. All right, the A-plus setup criteria. Okay, so it's number one, we have conviction ideas. You have to read the doc to understand this. Number two, we have key level and fibs. And number three, we have this. Or you have to read the doc to understand this if you want, but I want to focus in here on what I talked about before. I have four supplemental pieces of conviction in this trade. Let's iron it out. Nine and 21. Oh shit. Nine and 21 EMA crossover right here. Nine comes under the 21, which tells me that we are in a bearish trend. Okay. Listen, the thing obviously reverses. It crosses all the time. I mean, usually you see about two or three crosses a day from what I've seen. Today, we saw five. It was a very choppy day. I'd say usually about two. If you, if you have a good trend day, maybe one. We saw like one last week max, which is pretty nice. Uh, but I have the 9 and 21 EMA crossover telling me we are in a bearish trend. But where do I want to get in? Okay. Fib level resistance. Where, is my, where are my fibs? Here and here, okay? By the way, if you took this fib right here, right, that worked. Um, it didn't line up with the, nine, the 21 EMA, though. It wasn't a goose setup, but it was just a fib, um, and that worked out well. 
right? We come in a bearish trend, we get a little bounce. Where can I, if I really want those puts, right? We're really bearish today. I really think we're coming down. Where should I maybe get in? Boom, right in this FIB area. Okay. And it's not always going to be to the cent. I mean, it looks like it's like four or five cents off right there, but you know. <clears throat> All right. Um, step number three or piece of conviction number three, we have the 21 EMA. So I have, again, nine and 21 EMA crossover right here. Nine comes under. Showing me that we are bearish. Where can I get in? I have a fib resistance here where we're testing. Okay. So it should probably have a hard time getting over that. Oh, we also have a 21 EMA right there as well. That's three things. Okay. And obviously we have lower lows. So the trend is lower lows, lower lows, lower lows. It's not like a, it really is a stair stepping. Like it, it kind of is a perfect, like perfect formation of lower lows here. I mean, you have a low, you get a pop, you have a low, you get a pop. I mean, it's just stair stepping right here. I mean, look at that. So try to analyze the trend and just look at what's actually occurring there. But yeah. This trade paid nicely. You could see how well that rejected right there. And literally to the cent. Oh, uh, fifth point right here. Fifth piece of conviction. You have a, a psych level. Whole dollar, 427. Okay. Wait, let me just go back and see. Some. Okay, so this is just, this is an updated chart, by the way, of that same trade we just looked at. So remember 427 right here. Let's see that red, these red candles in the beginning of the day, 427 right here. Look how this played out. See these red, uh, same, literally the same chart, same day. Not making this up. Boom, 427. There's the 21 EMA. See how that overlaps? And what happened? More spillage. I mean, just textbook, textbook, right? Again, guys, I missed the move. Where can I get in? Where can I get in? Where can I get in? Stay patient. Wait for that right. I wait for that right setup and I grab a golden goose right here. Okay. And just to review, nine and 21 EMA crossover helps me establish the trend. Here's a zoomed in version. Okay. You see it right there. Got to zoom in for you guys. Nine crosses the 21. <coughs> the gray is the 21. The teal is the nine EMA. Um, step number two, pre-drawn fib levels. I obviously drew those at the beginning of this for you, or you could have a major key level. The green are, um, key levels that I draw in. Well, whoa, we actually have another goose right here. Looks like this might've been pre-market low match with the 21 right here. Look at that. Another goose right here on a major key level. Wow. Didn't even realize that, but that's, that's crazy. So you see how this, this works really well from you know what I've seen. Um, step number three right here, overlapping 21 EMA and the supplemental piece of conviction. Okay, right there. Here's a zoomed in version. I really did this well for uh, that March boot camp. Fib level right here, zoomed in. There's the 21. I mean, like what is that one cent over? Come on. That's a penny over. Give me a break. Strategy is money. All right, this is Tesla, guys. Tesla, a couple of weeks ago, had a massive squeeze. Guess what? Guess freaking what? What is that? No way. The golden goose. Remember Tesla, like three weeks ago, ran... Everyone had like a 1,500% trade on it. Not everyone, but a couple of people, Mander did, and some people on our Discord. Um, I had a nice trade on it, but not 1,500%. Tesla gave us a golden goose entry before the massive move, okay? This was, a, this was the key level we drew out in Discord that morning. Major key level. It was I think it was probably like yesterday's high or something or pre-market high. So we have this level drawn and I don't draw a lot of levels. So, you know, when I have them down, they, they must be important. So I have this level drawn 935. 
overlapping 21. Again, guys, it's not perfect. It's not always going to be like exactly overlapping. And also the EMAs do move. So you have to, you know, sort of judge them live time for yourself. But this one was close enough for comfort. Because again, I have a key support level, right? I, I broke over it. You see it struggled right here, struggled, uh, knifed under here. Once we break, that turns into support. Okay, you see it acting as support. We try to break it one last time. I have the I have this key level. I have the 21 EMA. So if the key level fails, I still have the 21 EMA, right? So it's like you're just giving yourself better odds for confirmation. Because if you're a short, you have to stuff this under a key level. You have to get through the buyers at the 21, right? You have to get through the buyers at a fib level. So think about that when you're using the goose strat. Even if you don't want to use the goose, think about that and other trading setups and strategies you're using. You know, the more pieces of conviction you have in a trade, aren't your odds just going to be better if you're giving yourself more reasons? I mean, it just makes sense. Okay. And a lot of people, just real quick to, to go back before I go into this Tesla example, a lot of people, the mistake you're making, if you're having a hard time right now, you're probably entering a trade on one piece of conviction. You're probably saying VWAP. Oh, I'm, I'm going to put VWAP. EMA crossover, I'm getting in, calls, they just cross the upside, right? Think about that. Are you really giving yourself the best chance to win with that trading strategy? I mean, you know, I could, my little brother, I could tell him about VWAP and he can go in and just punch it. Is he going to win every time? I mean, if, if VWAP is going to work every time or an EMA crossover is going to work every time, you know, anyone can do it. You have to really give yourself more pieces to the puzzle and your odds will increase and your win rate will likely increase. I mean, mine did at least. <coughs> I just say that with caution because like obviously we can't make or I can't make any promises um, to anybody. Everyone's results are going to vary, but it just makes sense. Like that's just what should happen. All right. Golden Goose on Tesla here, though. So you see this key level overlaps the 21. Do you see what happened? I mean, this is just the screenshot from um, what one of us had in Discord, in KingCap. But I think Manders went like 1,500. I mean, look at this ridiculous move from 935. It went over 1,000, I believe. I think Mander held like a psycho. Didn't sell at like 1,500% let it go back to like a 400% game, which is still good, but still great, but couldn't imagine giving back that much. Um, but yeah, the, the, um, this massive move we had the best entry, not the best, I guess, obviously this would have been be better, but like golden goose setup gave you a great entry. If you uh, had that in mind. All right. That's, so that's the little slide show I got for you. I want to go over, you might be like, all right, like you picked out some examples, right, of this strategy working perfectly. Guys, this shit worked today. This worked beautifully today. Let's just zoom in real quick. What do we got? QQQ today, okay? You see, um, does it show the date? Wednesday. Wednesday, today, this is far as my chart goes. I'm on the five minute. <laughs> I'm not even going to point to it yet. Hopefully you can, you could recognize it right away. Right. It look at that. Just masterful. Boom. Right here. QQQ. Fib 34464 guys. The, this is the fib level. We drew 34464 right here. Okay. You see that this blue ignore the green. Remember that's just some back testing crap that I'm doing. Okay. So the fib, I drew this blue line down to here. And it gave us this level right here. This is the 50, 50%. All right, I zoom in again, 344.64. We have that level drawn for us already because it's a fib. Boom, massive sell-off, massive sell-off and open. Oh, this is my back-tested level, by the way. Nice little bounce off it, just saying. Just saying, we'll see. I'm, I'm working on some stuff with this, but ignore that for now. But big sell-off right here, guys. We have our nine EMA crossover. So we're telling me, oh, bearish trend. Okay, we get a pullback, totally normal. We get a pullback to my EMAs. 
look, this is called an EMA extension. When the, the price action gets extended from the EMAs, you're more likely to get a pullback to these EMAs. Obviously, the thing's not going to go, you know, literally off a cliff forever unless it's Peton um, a couple months ago. Maybe Netflix, maybe Netflix. The point is you'll get, you usually get a pullback to your um, EMAs at the very least. And I stay patient, nine right here, this teal crosses over the 21 right here, bearish trend, right? Pretty obvious. Boom, we bounce back, but are we just gonna get a fat cup and handle into a squeeze? I mean, we rarely see that. It does happen sometimes. So just, you know, always proceed with caution. But usually the trend is going to continue. It's just a matter of where is that trend going to continue after a big sell-off like this. I'm really probably biased about being bearish here. You know, the selling pressure, bears are definitely in control for the day, unless there's a new catalyst or news. Um, most of the time that most of the time that continues from what I've seen. But anyway, fib level, wait for that pullback to the fib, boom, right here. <coughs> okay. I am four cents off. I'm four cents off. Close enough, guys. I'm getting in once I see it within like 10 cents. I'm starting to starting to build my position right here. And 21 EMA resistance right here. This 21 overlaps the fib. It's not perfect, but it's really close. And just look at look at the rest of this history right here. I mean, these paid, I don't know what percent, but they paid uh, I think over 150% right here. Um, uh, this is probably time decay. So probably not as well as they paid here. That's a great move from 344.64 down to three. That's a $4 move. It's a $4 move in 1055 to 1220. An hour and 25 minutes. Hour and 25 minutes. You got a $4 move down off of this. This gave you the perfect entry just today. I mean, I just happened to be making this video and today we have a perfect goose, okay? But yeah, that just about wraps it up for the goose strategy. You know, use this if you like, use this at your own discretion, obviously. It's not guaranteed to work 100% of the time. For me personally, I've had a lot of success with it. Does that mean you will? Who knows, okay? I can't guarantee anything, obviously, but, you know, I like what I have seen. I like what I've seen, you know, maybe just keep an eye on it. See if you notice anything before you jump in the water, but something definitely to consider. And if you guys have any questions, I'm going to drop the A plus uh, setup criteria doc underneath the tweet, or I'll get that out to you via Twitter. It's also posted in the discord. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to reach out. Honestly, guys, I DMs are just, uh, I'm obviously happy that I get a lot of DMs, but it's tough to get to all of them. It's a little overwhelming and I, I can't guarantee that I will see it. I'm not ignoring anybody. So if you got questions, probably just tag me in discord during in the live call. Um, if you're not in the platinum, um, if you're not in like the uh, premium discord, then just tag me on Twitter under one of my tweets and I'll get back to you if you have questions. Because again, the DMs probably not gonna see them. Or you could tag me if you have something like more um, private or whatever. Just tag me in the tweet underneath one of my tweets and just say, "Hey, coach, can you please check my DMs or my DM?" Okay, it's gonna be the best way to reach me. But yeah, if you got any questions on that, just reach out through those ways. But other than that, hope you guys enjoy the video, and hopefully, you know, winning days ahead. Let's close this week strong. If you're in the Discord, I will see you guys bright and early at 9 a.m. for pre-market session and looking forward to closing out the week strong. Have a great rest of your day, everybody. Take care.